born fatherless. I never knew my father. My mother worked 30 shillings a week to keep me go to school, right? We, get, we don't have education, we have inspiration. Spiritual music, you know, because it gets more revolutionized. Music is a people music, you know, reggae music is news. It's news about you and self, you and history. Things that you wouldn't really, them wouldn't teach in a school. That is the future, Rasta is the future. <laughs> yes. I I don't come to bow, you know. I come to conquer. I don't come to bow, I come to conquer. I don't really have no ambition, you know. I only have one thing that we are really like to happen. I like to see mankind live together. Black, white, shiny, you know what? You know what I mean? That's a... Oh, world politics is just things to keep the people divided and foolish and put your trust in men, you know, when none of them can do nothing for you. Because if you don't have no life, you don't have anything, you know. So even those who are big politicians, they must find Rastafari. Because my right is my right, like my life, you know, all I have is my life. Bob, keep on talking to the people. They might never hear your voice again. Keep on talking to them for a little while until you're cool, man. Well, you see, the people have a voice inside of them that talk to them, you know. That is the voice that these people must listen to. Because in everything you're going to, there's a wrong way and a right to you. And if you listen good, you will know the right way. True. You know? Because there is a voice inside talking to everyone. See? True. See? I am not the angel of death, lady. I am the child of life. Peace, one love, and hotel fam. This is your girl, T. McKeer Zerai, especially known as Queen T. We have a special show for you today. We are not going to do the Revolutionary Radio. However, we have a treat for you, uh, and we're going to do a tribute to the late, great Bob Marley. And I'm going to tell you in a minute why we're doing this, but let me go ahead and bring in my two sisters, who are going to help me with the show, and I believe I got the brother on too. Um, Kenya, are you there? Yes, I am. Peace, sis. Peace, family. Peace, peace. And what about my other sister, Tisha Kushite Power and, and the King Ski? Are you there? Yes, we are. We still rolling. Okay. All right, all right, all right. By the way, that was a really good show you guys just did. So we yes. still rolling. Uh, very informative. As usual, y'all be bringing it, boy, I tell you. But we're gonna go ahead and roll back roll into the show. We are doing a tribute tribute. I keep wanting to say tribute, like the newspaper. Mm-hmm. We're not doing a tribute. We're doing a tribute to uh to Bob Marley. And the reason why we are doing this is because Bob Marley is very strong in our cipher right now. Yes. Um and so if those of you who, who have been following the shows or know us personally or Vice versa, whatever. Those of you who have been, you know that we do libate, we do meditate, you know, we do have connections with the ancestors. So, you know, this may be for those who have never tried it or for those who want to try it and, and don't know how to get started or whatever. I just see I see the show so much more. And I've been asking Bob, what is it that you're trying to say to us? And I really haven't gotten a full answer, but I can just, I want to share with, with our listeners the bits and pieces that he's given me. And I know he's been in your cipher, too, because uh, we're talking about Tisha and Ski and, and um, Kenya, because we all cipher together on a daily basis. Right. Right, right. No Okay. So, um so, so again, we're doing this show. We're going to play some of his music. Matter of fact, I want to play one song right now, and after we play this song, we're going to come back and we're going to get right into the ciphering with Bob Marley. And I think this first song is much appropriate because I know the king is going to tear this song up. We'll be right back. I was going to cut it off, but um, I like that ending. I like the the uh, drums and the... And the um, the bass guitar. So mm-hmm. again, welcome to our special show here today. We are actually having a tribute to uh, the great ancestor Bob Marley. Okay. Yeah. 
see, did he did he have was his name Robert or because I was trying to find it on the internet but I ain't have no luck. Yes, Robert. Is it? It is Robert. Huh? Yeah. It is Robert. It is Robert. Oh, okay. Okay, now wait a minute, y'all. We can't be sounding sad because this is not a memorial. This is a celebration because I'm telling you, I know y'all, because we've been talking about this. Bob, he, Bob ass is here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And so what we're going to do is we thought it would be, I, I want to say fun, but I don't really want to call it fun, but kind of fun, that we will just share with, with you all in the audience, in the listening uh, um, cypherness, I guess. Uh, we want to share with you the things that have been happening like the last, I would say, what, the last month or two, which I think. About a, about a, the last, well, a few weeks to a month. Also, his okay. name, his um, birth name is Nesta Robert Marley, N-E-S-T-A, middle name Robert, last name Marley. Nesta Robert, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like, Nest, like Nestle Crunch, Nesta. Yeah, okay. okay, Nesta. Okay, okay, cool, uh-huh. cool, cool. You know what, now that you said that, I, I remember that, but I couldn't remember his name, but I knew he had a different name. Right. But anyway, um... So so we just try to we want to share with you all of these different uh some people might call them clues but they were just coming so strong the things that he was bringing to us um and especially me I mean I I have to get paper and write this down cuz it was just so much but the mm-hmm. stuff that he is coming and, and I've been asking the question I've been um calling cuz let me say this in the first place I did not call or channel Bob Marley at all so I want to say that because I do have certain people that I do. I have certain ancestors that I have a relationship with, so I call upon them quite regularly, and Bob Marty is not one of them, so I was kind of surprised. It took me a while to find out that he was even in the cipher. So mm. that's why I'm like two months because it, it seemed like it was a little bit longer. But, it but probably was, like, yeah. Well, you know what? Let me say that. First, let me say this, um, because uh, I believe this, and so do those on the phone. At least they told me they believed it, okay, <laughs> that um, <laughs> Bob wants this stuff. For some reason, he wants this to be uh, on the airwaves, uh, TV waves or something. I don't know, some kind of way. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to do our part because he's bugging the hell out of me. He's worrying me, y'all. He keeps asking me, saying stuff. <laughs> I actually get a I actually get a picture of Bob, and this is a true story, y'all. I don't give a damn if y'all believe me or not, but this is true. I actually get a picture of Bob just sitting back, um, you know, smoking his uh, uh his ales. <laughs> you want to say that? Yes, and he's just talking. He's he's just talking, and I mean, he's talking like because I was writing down the stuff that I was hearing him say, but they was all over the place. It wasn't something that you can kind of. You know, it's like a puzzle. We've been trying to piece it together, but he's just sitting back, he's chilling, and he's just talking. You know, and I'm and I have to ask, what the hell are you talking about? But he's just talking. So um, I'm going to say, for me, I, we're going to just give. Let me start out by saying, when I um, believe that Bob came into the cipher, but it might have been before this. But I remember a couple months ago, when not, not even that long, maybe a month and a half, maybe a month, when um, one of the the uh, sisters that was performing that. At our at our event this week, this past week, by the way, was the bomb. Y'all should have been here. Yes, anyway, it was. Anyway, so uh, this sister that's, that's on our team, she's on Team to Ride, she is friends with um, Stephen Marley, or mm-hmm. she knows Stephen Marley or something. Well, anyway, she got all these photos with Stephen Marley. So what I did was I, pay, I posted uh, Stevie Marley's photo on my wall um, to show this other sister who likes Bob Marley and who likes his singing. And actually she sent me an audition tape with her singing a uh, redemption song. That's how it really started for me. It's when we got mm. this tape with her singing redemption song. And I'm like, yeah, I want her on the venue. She sounded really good. You know, she she really sang sound good on the on the um on the on the tape, on the video. And so um it started with that and then um I remember now if my dates are off, y'all help me, but I'm just telling you how I'm getting it in my mind. I remember we were talking, and I believe um, Tisha started humming, get up, stand up. Is that, no, I, no, I, that started, I, started, yeah, I started singing it, y'all, and I am not a Bob Marley fan. I don't know where it came from. It was just like out the blue because I, I do not, 
I I don't really listen to him. I'm, I'm really familiar with him, but I don't know where that came from. So it was just really weird. <laughs> It's just what really weird. Like, y'all we just started going crazy. Then all y'all started joining in and stuff. Yeah, we all started. I started. I finished it off. I finished singing. Right. You know, I was singing it. You know, we just like, wow. We, I, and we like, did Bob Marley, I believe I said, did Bob Marley just come all up and through our conversation? Mm-hmm. We were talking yes, about from did. saying <laughs> And all of a sudden, KJ started, huh, you know, started singing, get up, stand up. And then I, I right. stand up for you, right? Right. You know, right. I, you know how you drop it off. And so we just, we kept on going. We And right after that, some more stuff came up, and, and he wanted KJ, I believe, to play that song. And yes, we so I had immediately, song. yes, as mm-hmm. I had um, started singing it, and I said, I don't know why I started singing it. They were singing it. Then I immediately found it on YouTube and posted it on my Facebook. And for those who um, is familiar with my Facebook, anytime I post a song, I always put, when I'm posting it, I never put the name of the song. I, I put a little bit of the, the song in in the title of it. So as mm-hmm. I'm putting, typing, what I'm typing, Tisha said the part that I was typing, it was just so ironic. She said, I, I was typing, don't give up the fight, and that's what came right out her mouth. And I was right. like, that's what I'm putting right now. Like, I, I'm just finishing typing that part. And she was like, mm-hmm. what? It was just so ironic. I remember that. I remember that. It it really was kind of strange, but I mean, I'm telling y'all, let me, let, me do a, let me do a pause break right now and tell you that if you are listening to this and you don't really believe all of this, let me tell you that um, as we as we tell all the time, we teach this all the time. Y'all know we got a show on Friday that, that's called The Black Woman is God. If you don't know who you are as a the indigenous person or the indigenous people of this land, then this will not make sense to you because you don't even actually don't even know who you are yet. Now I'm just speaking to the ones who don't. I'm not saying that if you know if you do, cool. But what I'm saying is this is our nature to be able to connect with ancestors. This is our nature to be able to um, see things, you know, with our, with our third eye, you know, hear things with our inner ear. This is our nature. This is not what we are talking about that's happening is not something that we should go, oh, my God, I can't believe, you know, they, they must be some kind of witches or they may be, um, right. what's it called? Uh, um, I was going to say flamboyant. What is it called? <laughs> what <are> you <laughs> clairvoyant. <about>? Clairvoyant. <laughs> Clairvoyant. Clairvoyant. You always say flamboyant. It's clairvoyant. Clair. Clairvoyant. Yellow me, but anyway. So if you 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 have to know that this is part of our nature, our DNA. It's just Mm -hmm. blocked because you don't know you can do this. You don't know you have it, and you don't know you have this connection with your ancestors. So if you want to know how to connect with them, go back to Tisha Ski's show, I don't know, what, about three weeks ago? And Mm -hmm. listen to, uh, and what we talked about, they talked about um, meditation and libations and connecting with the ancestors. But anyway, that's the end of the the little break I just had there. So what we are doing is we are telling you that we, we have been, Bob has been here so strong that we knew we had to talk about it. As a matter of fact, this is what he requested. So um, that's what we're doing right here now. Uh, Ski, I don't know, did we talk about your first moment when you felt Bob in the cipher? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, with Bob Marley, we had, um, you had told us about the movie. And oh, the yeah, yeah. My husband's been too much. It has been too. So it has been too much. Okay, okay. Yeah, you had told us about the movie, but we had never went to go get it. And one day we had to, we went to go get it. And we always were mm-hmm. six to five from time to time. But um, when we got the movie, we really got an in-depth look at him. He, um, his struggle with um, trying to, um, you know, because America would never let his music come over here. Yeah. And so there come a point in time, us here in America, we, unless we was really tied in the music and the culture of, because uh, he was more of a world artist. Uh, right. So we were really tied in the music. We were kind of really known, but if he wasn't, we really wouldn't know Bob Marley until we get a little older, and they would always equate him to marijuana smoking, such and such. 
But he was a mm-hmm. freedom fighter. And and the and what he brought was so powerful. So he just like y'all been saying, he's been coming in for like the past two months almost. Yeah. About two months. Let, mm-hmm. you know, he was been letting himself be known. He's been linking up with uh he's been you know, it's just how they equate in um uh, scary movies and stuff. It's like when um everything's going on concerning this and that, but like you said, Queen, if you don't know who you are, we always do this. Black people, we are channelers. We are the master channelers. Yes. Right. So um, Bob has been coming in, and I think Bob wants us to um, reinvigorate his um, movement for now because it's a proper. It, it was proper then, but it, should, it is proper now, and it should be reinvigorated. It should be um, even though. Um, the great um, Bob Marley had his um, problems and he had his own things. He thought about himself, but he always made sure that you stand up for your rights. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. you don't give up the fighting with the song, I Shot the Deputy. Uh-huh. I Shot the Sheriff, but I didn't shoot the Wait, 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 before you go there, because I, I already got you on here to break that down. You hear me? You go, Ski going to break it. And teacher too, they're going to break that song down. Okay, but I, I won't do it yet. So you hold that into your hat, hold it into your in your brain, um, because um, I want to go back and talk about uh, the get up and stand up song. That's like um, he's telling us, like you said, he's telling us to to me. He's telling us, you know, we got to get up, we got to stand up, and we can't we can't take this anymore. We can't lay down and take what has been happening to us anymore. And like you said, it was good for that time when he first brought it out, but it's good. For now, you know this is it's coming back again. It's good for now, but I did want to say that, um, like you just said, Bob had his problems too. You know, we ain't we're not worshiping him like he didn't have no issues and he had no problems because that is far from the truth. Matter of fact, all of us have had issues and problems and still do, and we become ancestors. We're gonna be ancestors with problems that we had. So uh, mm-hmm. we don't want people to believe that. We just want to say that. Um, even still, you have to know how to call upon the positive energy of an ancestor. You can't leave yourself wide open and call upon ancestors and not give them instructions because they're going to come through exactly the way you call them. Or if they come through like Bob Marley did, you know, usually they don't come through with something negative. Not to us. Yeah. They'll come to the pink people that way, you know, and, and forms of ghosts. That's why they're scared of them. But that's another whole show. That's another whole show. So anyway, um, but hold on to that. I want to go down to what we were talking about. No, you know what? I take that back. Go ahead and break down. I shot the sheriff. Well, I shot the sheriff. When I used to hear the song growing up, um, I was always like, wow, what's that song? He's talking about shooting the sheriff. He's not mm-hmm. playing. There's some killers down there in the islands, boy. They get shit mm-hmm. playing. Right. Because, um, that was a big thing. But, it, it, like, um, as we grew older, me and the Queen, we listen to the song now, like you saying, with our inner ear. Mm-hmm. And the sheriff, I will equate the sheriff to the um, the white supremacy struggle that they were dealing with in his homeland. Mm-hmm. And as you know, Bob comes from a mixed um, background. His daddy was a merchant, sell or whatever comes uh-huh. through, and, and um, just have babies with the black women mm-hmm. and do things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So um, he was all there. Land was under oppression just like us here. But it was um, a little bit raw there. It was very raw. Oh. And so the sheriff was the oppression and attacked it and shot it down with him coming out in the fashion that he did and being a world a world renowned speaker for liberation and freedom of African people, of the black, you know. Even though he equated it in a utopian sense of everyone, he still held on to that black. So the sheriff is the uh, white supremacy system that that was attacking him at that time. And he kind of shot it down. He broke it. He was involved in a lot of political things, but he did shoot the deputy, as he said. And those are the ones who, who will keep coming in power to take on, okay, you take out the deputy. I mean, the sheriff, here come the deputy. They're next in line to be the sheriff once you kill the sheriff. So you must get them all. And he's saying he failed to get them all. And that's on us. That's why he's coming to us now to put his word out here. That's right. 
because Ooh, I, like you said, I didn't shoot the deputy, mm. but y'all can. That's right. That's right. Y'all can shoot the wow. deputy. To watch. Y'all can shoot down everything that's repressing us because I have cracked the doors and many before him have cracked the doors and shot the sheriffs down mm. because we speaking on this thing in a very great deep light that many of our other ancestors couldn't speak on as deeply, but they did shoot the sheriff. They shot down that oppression system that, that many of the white um, colonization people were put onto the black race. So they attacked it. They did. He did very good, but as he said, he did not shoot the deputy. It's up to us. To and it's up to us. And that's what we do here at Donnie's Network. We shoot them deputies. At 1382, we shoot them deputies. And <laughs> that's what we do here. So you are listening to Dynasty Network, 1382. And this is, um, we're doing a special show here called, this is Revolutionary Music Network still, but we're doing a special show for uh, in tribute to Bob Marley, the, the, the late great Bob Marley, and so I'm going to play a song, one of his songs that, um, this is my favorite song, actually, but you know, I like them all, but this is my favorite song, and I, I want to say that to what um, what the king just said, you know, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. When we come back, we're going to talk about numbers, because Bob has been giving us numbers, and we want to uh, kind of go through those when we get back, so we'll be right back. All right, all right. Again, this is your girl, Keith McKee has arrived, especially known as Queen T with C. Davis, Teach Suicide Power, and Kenya Jones. That was the man, Bob Marley. And as you notice, we're playing all live songs. Um, you know, they were recorded live. Um, right. About, you know, above, of Bob Marley, and this was um, actually uh, the king on the phone has suggested that. So it, it's working out pretty good. And so now we want to talk about the numbers that Bob has been um, shooting through, <laughs> and I think the number thing is what really convinced me that Bob was here um, mm-hmm. in our cipher. I mean, I know a little, many things have been happening, but this, when the numbers came around, and I'm not a numerologist person, so I don't even know about numbers. You know, I had to go and do some studying on certain numbers and see what they meant, and then I got, you know, I got with the team, and we ciphered together and tried to figure out what the numbers meant. And so, um, and if you all out there know, then please call us. This is a live call-in show at 646-716-7572. Right. Um, if you got any information about what we're about to talk about with these numbers, please call us. Don't forget to press mm-hmm. the number so we know that you are on the line. Now, um, this okay, I'm going to start it here because this is kind of what did it for me. We were talking about uh, the birthday. And, um, mm-hmm. okay, so let's say he was born February the, the 6th, but I'm going to do it in numbers, 2-6. 1945, and then he transitioned over 5-11-1981, okay? And so when I figured out on paper, um, it said that he would have, he would, if he was alive today, he would be 67 years old, and I was born in 67. Now, I got something here that says 62, but I can't read my writing. I don't know what I wrote there <laughs> that went with 62. But anyway, so I started looking at the sixes. I'm like, okay. So I took the sixes, put them aside because there's three sixes there. And, mm. you know, religious people would do something with that. But anyway, um, and so when when Doc was here, I was asking him, you know, how many people are in his family. He has 11 brothers and sisters. So when he said 11, I was like, wow, I didn't know you had that many. But anyway, um, I was looking online and looking up some of Bob Marley's stuff again. He had me looking up some stuff, um, and I saw that, you know, it reported that he had 11 children total. Now, Mm. that kind of, you know, stunned me a little bit because I've only seen maybe five. Five? Mm -hmm. About five Five. of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I was like, 11 children? And so then I thought about what Doc said. He just told me that he had 11 in his family. So then, so 11 started to stick out to me, the number 11. Mm-hmm. And um, so then, again, I went back to the, you know, he died on the 11th of May. And then these two numbers were sticking out of me, uh, sticking out for me at 11. And as I was talking to, um, to Sis, I remember I said, you know what? I forgot that Lauren Hill is here tonight. It was mm. 11-28, 11-28. So I'm watching the 11s and, and the 2s. It was mm-hmm. 11-28, and Lauren Hill was here in Phoenix. And um, 
And she's got five, what, five of his grandkids? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah she has five of his five. grandchildren. She got five of his, his grandchildren. So then I, it, it started blowing my mind. And I, I was like, KJ, something is going on with these right. lemons and, and these twos. And I don't know, do you have that pulled up, sis? I do. You, know, you already know. <laughs> I should already know. I don't know what I'm tripping okay. off Okay. Of. Right, yeah, uh, ahead, meaning of 11, so the spiritual meaning of the number 11 is quite diverse. The number 11 is thought of as a master number in numerology because it has it's because of its double digit of the same number. When this occurs, the vibrational frequency of prime number doubles in power, meaning that the attribute of the numbers are the number one are doubled. Therefore, the very basic and primary understanding of the number one is that of a new beginning and purity. When we see the digits double with the 11, then these attributes double in strength. So in numerology, the 11 represents higher ideas, invention, refinement, congruency, balance, fulfillment, and vision. The 11 carries a vibrational frequency of balance. It represents male and female equality. It mm. contains both the sun and the moon energy simultaneously, yet holding them both in the perspective separateness and perfect balance. Mm. Consequently, constant reoccurrences of the 11 in our lives often signals us to be aware of our balance. So mm. the balance emotion, balance of emotion, thoughts and spirits, balance of your masculine and feminine aspects, balance of work and play. Elevens are magical messages asking us if we are centered or off kilter. When we add the one plus one, remember you said you saw those twos, eleven mm-hmm. reduces, we get the number two, which is also a balanced number. Numeral two also deals with equality, justice, calm, kindness, tact, and duality. Those who recognize spiritual meaning of the number 11 in their lives are quite sensitive to vibrational frequencies, matching these attributes above listed. 11's appearing on a constant basis is indicative of, of a reflective, thoughtful, and intuitive soul. And then basically it's saying um, they, the person, I guess, get a, a, a load of emails asking about the number 11. Con- and basically 11 con- is confirmation to maintain integrity when you enter in, when you enter into an open space of consciousness. You just got to make sure you remain in your balance. And realign, reaffirm, reestablish, rebalance ourselves. Hmm. What you get from that? Oh, you you know, you know what I think about it. Um, for some reason, me me and the king been seeing the eleven a lot lately. And you know what it's been? It's been nine eleven. Every morning. Mm. Every morning we look up. It's nine eleven. Okay. Yeah. So you know mm. it's like you know that eleven. I'm, I'm glad to hear that about the balance and the female yeah, really. and the principal. That's definitely what we about. That you know, this, we all about that balance, right? And that's that's why when you look at my odd name, you see the double A's there, mm-hmm. giving it that that significance of of the balance. And A A, you know, A is the first letter of the alphabet, right? So when you go back to me, I say you take it all the way back to the one, the ani, and the ani and the yani is the black, Uh-oh. <laughs> the, the Uh-oh. universe, the yani verse. And so Bob is telling us to stay focused. That's right. Bob is telling us to stay focused, put the balance back, and, you know, like you said, don't give up the fight. Let's keep rolling. Right. And you know what else I hear in that? I hear, um, as she was reading that, I I was getting um, the words that we were using for it. Because, you know, we're doing this Black Woman's Guide. We're trying to get, you know, establish the woman, reestablish the, the black sister, the the indigenous sister, you know, the, the god of the earth. We're trying to establish us back to our rightful place, and, and mm-hmm. because it's, it's off balance. It's off balance. Mm-hmm. So when she was mm-hmm. that, 
and I heard in there, I heard it say something about a man, woman, and I heard mm-hmm. balance. Mm-hmm. And so right. it's like, to me, it's like it's saying that, and I'm agreeing with these. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying this is what I got from it, was that mm-hmm. um, the message is for us to, we have to, in order for us to do this, to get up, to stand up, we have to balance this thing out. It's, it's all It's been off balance for so long, you know, because we're not back where we're supposed to be. It's just the man and the child. But the woman is not there. And so we have to, you know, for us to, to do this thing, we have it has to be a balance. And there's no way we're going to be able to do it off balance. That's what mm-hmm. I thought from what you just said about the number 11. Yep. So you got something, King? Um. Well, yeah, Why do I feel like, like listen, I got something to say. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Why do I feel like we at some kind of a, a spiritual reading session or something? <laughs> 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 and Dang. we're just going around in circle. God, do you have anything that the Spirit has said to you, Ski? <laughs> that circle. Oh, yeah, that's that circle. That's that circle. No. <laughs> but, yeah, the 11 is very deep, and that's, I think, why they chose for um, – to do what they did back in a um, few years ago on 9-11, mm-hmm. because the 9 also is a, uh, is a power number. Yeah. It's a, and then they couple it with the 11. So, yes, it's very deep that the 11 is standing out, and also with the 2. Oh, yeah, the 2. You know, because you can't have nothing without the duality. Right. The, two right. the duality, mm-hmm. the balance. Mm-hmm. And um, we always, I've always been intrigued with numbers, and I'm glad y'all was on them because I count a lot of stuff. So I, 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 I see a lot of numbers. I be, well, it's just crazy. But um, mm-hmm. that's what we have to do. Like you were saying, that's what we do. We are the, the, you know, we are that. We are the first numerologists and stuff like that. So that's all I can get from the ancestors for us. Like y'all said, just uh, even with the redemption song, we must redeem what we are. Mm-hmm. Were. There you go. Balance. We were balanced. <laughs> yeah, we we seen that balance. Yeah. And 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 the balance goes as as above, so below. So redeem that balance with your home, your ma- and also with the cosmic universe, the Yanni verse. Right. Redeem the balance that the black woman once had with everything on the planet. Now you know we know as many things that have set her off balance, but that's that's not the show for that. But. That's what I got from um, the 11th. That's why I already say you better check out the My Odd Hour uh, next Saturday at 4 o'clock, p- 4 o'clock p.m. Now it's standard time. And and I, I still want to stick to the numbers because I got some stuff that's going to blow you away a little bit because it blew me away. And this is the stuff that really, truly made me believe that Bob was, was talking. I mean, really, I know okay. some of the stuff I just said. Are oh, you got something, sis? Yeah, I have something. I wanted to kind of um, touch on just something, just really briefly, because okay. what I've noticed within our cycle, within our group, is the uh, and what it basically was saying at the beginning of talking about the spiritual meaning of the number eleven is the frequency or the vibration, and I've noticed that it seems like um, that the group as a whole is vibrating on this certain frequency. You know what I'm saying? Like we're, yeah. one person will be feeling some type of way. You're like, well, I've been feeling that way too. Or we are having yeah. like on the same thought process. And it seems yeah. like we're kind of thinking with one another. And it says that when you see that number 11, that that frequency is doubling. You know what I'm saying? And, oh, and, wow. you, think about, and you think about it most of the time, if we are feeling some type of way, it's another person feeling that way. Or the other one is it's just something that's just all kind of um, congealing together. Like our cipher is is, is um, going in, around about in a circle, and we're all getting that same frequency. And that's right. been kind of tripping me out, and I've been noticing that, you know, for for uh, you know for a while, you know, for the past month or two, I've been noticing yeah. that it seems like our frequency is more, um, you know, vibrating on a higher on a higher plane. And so that that really stuck out to me when it was talking about the doubling, the strength right. of that vibrational frequency. So I just wanted right. to add that part in because that's, I, that's good. something that's that good. I've been noticing that upon the group. That's good, and I and I'm noticing that we keep on saying that this happened. This began about one or two months ago. Right. Where's that one and that two again? I'm telling y'all, yes. the, the, the twos and ones. 
there's something going on in the nine. There's something that is, I don't, these numbers are, we really have to pay attention to this because the numbers are speaking for real. And by the way, uh, Bob Marley started singing when he was 21. His first recording was when he was 21, 2 1. Wow, I'm just saying. That's something. That's something. I'm just wow. Saying. Just saying. And so wow. um, I was going to. I'm going to play another song, but I'm going to play another song going out. I just wanted to, to cover some of this stuff right here. And this is the stuff that um, I was searching in his bio and all the different things. And this is what really, really, really made me know that something was going on. And it was blowing me away. And I'm I'm calling the sisters and, you know, y'all need to hear this. So I'm going to give you some, some things that happened, um, like uh, articles and things like that. And I want you to pay attention to the dates that I'm about to read for you, okay? Pay attention to the dates. Remember, Mm -hmm. right now we're dealing with the numbers that have been coming through Bob Marley Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. two, one, the elevens, um, and the nines, okay? So here we go. Oh, and the fours. I forgot to tell you about the fours, and you're going to see why. The fours, yeah. The fours. I forgot forgot about the fours, but the fours have been coming through strong too, but not as strong as the elevens, okay? Um, So... I, I was looking up his information. Well, the first thing I saw was um, 420. Uh, his son, <laughs> Steve, was born 420, 1972. Okay. Now, remember back at the beginning of the show, I said that we had posted uh, Steve Marty's picture with Ms. L. And mm-hmm. him so. And he got, he's got 11 kids. For how ironic is it for out of all 11 kids, we end up with Steve and Marley. You know? Right. So, anyway. Uh, Stephen Marley was born on 4-20-1972, okay? And then the film, uh, Marley, the one that Ski was mentioning earlier, was released on 4-20-2012. Mm. The one in that two, in that four, yeah. Two, in that four, mm-hmm. Um, Bob Marley, they had a, they did an article on Bob Marley uh, in the Rolling Stone, and it was... Uh, archived from the original on April, which is 4, 421-2009. There was another article out about Bob Marley called The Regret That Haunted His Life by Tim Mm. Adams, uh, and he wrote this in The Observer. And it came out on 4-8-2012. Ziggy Marley is another Mm. article came out. uh, Called Ziggy Marley, the adopt, the adopt. I'm sorry, Ziggy Marley to adopt Judaism. It came out in the Observer Reporter, and this was printed on April the 13th, which is 4 13, 2006. There was another article called A Death by Skin Cancer, the Bob Marley story, and it came out in the Tribune. Y'all ready for this one? This one came out 4 11. 2011. Wow. I kid you not. Wow. I, kid I got you not. some more numbers to um, touch on, too. Okay. okay. Let, me, let me call this last one out. This last Go one ahead. is Bob, Bob Marley, Find the Grace, Thanks. and it came out April, which is 4 16, 2009. So there you go. Mm. That blew mm. me away. And by the way, 420, did I already say this before? No, you didn't. You didn't. Oh, okay, yeah, 420. <laughs> All right, we need to go back because we keep saying 420. Things came out in 420. Stephen was born on 420. You know, right. we had like three articles came out in 420 or 421. Well, I just found out, y'all, I just found out that <laughs> 420 is National Weed Day. Right. Yeah, I found that out this year. Really? What? Yeah, yeah I I know. Know. and I don't even smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That's such a thing. No, I, I, just, I just found out. That's crazy. I thought this was a wow, y'all. Y'all okay, y'all some late babies. Y'all some babies. Let me go. <laughs> Let me go ahead. I'm gonna touch on the number two again. Now, um, this is giving a little I got a bit more in hold on, K J I got a question. What are you supposed what? to do on four twenty on National Weed Day? What are you supposed you to do? You're supposed to smoke weed. Uh, Everybody's okay. supposed to roll up a spliff. That's what they call a spliff, a L, a a blunt. <laughs> and you talk, talk to the ancestor. You talk to the ancestor. It's not for Marley. By Marley Day. 
Wow. For somebody who don't smoke, I mean, wow. I know people that smoke. That's how I found out about it. Oh, okay. Oh, let us know. My, I mean, my, 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 my ex, my ex, yeah, used to smoke puff, puff, fire. That, I mean, they was making banners and stuff to put on Facebook for it and everything. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yes, I mean, it's a real, it's a big stuff, y'all. I didn't even know. Okay, y'all, let me tell y'all. The number two, uh, the symbolic meaning of the number two is kindness, balance, tact, equal, um, equalization, and duality. The number two reflects a quiet power of judgment and the need for planning. Two beckons us to choose. Wow, that is some power. The spiritual wow. meaning of the number two also deals with the exchanges exchanging like exchanges made with others, partnerships, both harmony and rivalry, and communication. Two urges us out of indecisive um indecision cause us to unite with like minds and like ideas to access us to exert our natural flow of judgment to do what is best for our souls. Wow. That said a lot, y'all. I don't know if y'all didn't feel that because I felt it. Yeah. No, I felt it. I've, I've been taking notes. Wow. And then, would well, you have the number four there, too? Yes, I do. The number four. Okay. The, the symbolic meaning of number four deals with stability and invokes the grounded nature of all things. Consider the four seasons, four directions, four elements. All these amazingly powerful essences wrapped up in a nice square package of four. Four represents solidity, calmness, and home. A reoccurrence of four in your life may signify the need to get back to your roots, center yourself, or even plant yourself. Four also indicates a need for persistence and endurance. Hmm. Four means four is wow, significant. It is, but oh, wow. That's why I can't believe I almost forgot to, to bring it up. But yeah, that four is a. Uh, oh, that four is off the chain. Now, if we want to add those two, now two plus two is four. Mm-hmm. If we want to add those together, so we just went over four. If you want to add those four into eight, the symbol number eight, the symbolism backing number eight deals largely with business, success, and wealth. This is due to the fact that eight represents continuation, repetition, and cycles. Such elements are seen in the arenas where success is obtained simply because of Dodge's detrimation and reputation. Y'all heard that? Also, Mm -hmm. matters of business and wealth largely depends on cycles to fulfill their manifestation. It is it's like the snowball analogy. As it continues to roll, it gets bigger and bigger with each revolu- with each revolution. Eight represents the kind but y- yes, the um with each revolution. Eight represents that kind of momentum. Oh, that uh, must be me because I'm so eight seventy eight. Mm. Okay. Oh, eight seventy eight. I love revolution anyway. <laughs> well, I love revolution too. <laughs> I like telling and changing and changing oh. for the better and changing for good, and that's what revolution exactly. means. Exactly, and like you said, change. whatever you're trying to manifest to feel, if you're doing it right, if you're doing it right, it's gonna snowball and turn into a really big thing. So basically, you gotta stay on track. You gotta stay on yes, track. Yes, you do. And, and yes, watch this out is some very practical. And watch out for distractions. Yeah, they say because you it can be dodged. If you dodge that stuff and you kind of look at the repeti- the repetition of the numbers and stuff, you can kind of pick up on what you need. It's like sending messages to vibrate with your spirit that you just need to pick up on. Right. Right on. Right on. Wow, well, if you are listening, uh, you are listening to Revolutionary Music Network, and we have a special audition going on right now. I kind of like this. Maybe I'll change the, the network and just do this. Just pick somebody. Yeah, and I like this, too. I, I like <laughs> it. It's nice and comfortable, you know, and whatever, whatever. But um, 
you know, um, before we, well, we got a little time left, but I want to bring up, because I just got reminded that I missed something. And, you know, I didn't really miss it, but I did. Um, when, let me go back to, well, I never went there in the first place, but this past week, we had our uh, event. We had three, four, five days with Dr. Umar. Oh, yeah. And, um, and it was off the chain, so those of you missing, I'm sorry, you know. But anyway. You just keep um, saying. We were at, we, <laughs> at the, at the uh, big event, which was at the George Washington Carving Museum. We had another event the next day, which ended up being really, really big, I guess because the word got out. And even though we had a nice uh, we had a nice house on Saturday, we had, like, more, I would say more people. The place was smaller, but it just seemed like more people on Sunday at the uh, Caribbean Spice Restaurant. And so there was a, a young lady, there was a sister that was supposed to come and sing for me, open up, you know, for Dr. Umar, and she couldn't do it, okay? And so I was left with nobody to help me sing, and I actually wanted her to sing Redemption Song, There We Go Again, you know? Mm-hmm. And since she, you know, couldn't do it, I just felt like, wow, you know, now I don't have my music. I didn't have any entertainment or anything to kick this off. Well, it all happened to where, and I have a witness because KJ was there. Mm-hmm. Um, it all happened to where um, I just asked for, in the audience, I said, anybody got any talent? And I'm telling y'all, these people, I shouldn't say these people, my brothers and sisters, they put on a beautiful show, didn't they, KJ? <laughs> They yes. came out of good work. They was uh, singing, and and uh, and one sister said, "Hey, I got my guitar in my in my van or my truck in my car, or whatever." She said, and I said, mm-hmm. "You kidding me?" She said, "Yeah." She said, "You want me to sing a song?" And I told her, "Well, yeah, you you know, sure. Go get your go get your guitar." And then her husband says, "Well, you need an amp because I got an amp in my car too." And I'm like, "You got an amp?" He said, "Yeah, I got and I got two <laughs> microphones." I said, "You got to be kidding me!" Right. <laughs> She went to his car. They, they went to the car, and she pulled out her guitar, and uh, he pulled out the amp and the two wireless remotes. I might add, <laughs> and so um, so everything was cool. They went and set up and everything, and and um, you know did their little show. They were singing the last song that they sang. I remember standing by the countertop, uh, talking to the owner of the restaurant, and I remember hearing doom 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. And I turned around, I said, no, she's not going to sing Redemption Song. Because I, I didn't tell her what to sing. I just told her, get up mm-hmm. there, you know, they, they they look conscious. So I said, get up there and just sing what you, you know, do what you want to do. And she started singing Redemption Song and I almost fell out. I almost fell the hell out. Wow. I was like, very wow. Good. I was like, wow. And so the last one the last story I want to throw out there, unless Bob got something else to say, I don't know, is um the last night, or is it the last night before? I can't remember because I got twenty five thousand things in my brain. But um, I was it was last night. I was putting together a Bob Marty melody melody. There you go, a melody for the pictures from the event. Everything is still in this event. <laughs> As I was putting up these pictures for the event, which, by the way, um, if you all are looking for the pictures on YouTube, it's because they blocked them in the United States. I'm going to let Ski take that in a few minutes, okay? But they blocked Bob Marley's music like that, uh, the way I, you know, in the United States. That's what it told me. So, um, anyway, um, I was working on this, and I had to download all of his songs. So I started downloading each and every, each one of his songs into my, my – um, the program that I used to, to create the tracks. And as I was putting them together, I was on the phone talking to KJ. I was putting them together, and I had did the first, I think, four tracks. Because I had, like, maybe eight or nine tracks I wanted to put on there. So I did the first four tracks. Then when I got to the fifth track, it it was, um, don't worry about a thing, because every little thing is going to be all right. That song. Okay. So when I heard that, and I was like, okay, so I got that song. I, I pasted that to where it's supposed to be. Then I went and grabbed another song. I went to grab Redemption Song and pasted it on there, played it, and it was Don't Worry About a Thing. And I'm like, oh. and I was like what the hell? So I took and um, I, I counted that out, and I, I pulled up another song, another song. I think it was One Love or something like that. And I went to play it, and it started playing Don't Worry About a Thing. Every little thing would be all right. <laughs> 
And right. Like Bob again. There you go. You know what? I'm I'm talking to KJ, so I'm not really paying attention. I'm hearing it, but I'm not hearing it. It was that type of thing. And so I closed that out, and then I went and grabbed another song, and I forget what the first one was. I went and grabbed another song, and I went and I pasted it, and I played it, and it was Don't Worry About a Thing. And I said, KJ, hold on. Quit talking for a minute. I said because I got some issues going on over here. Remember, KJ? Mm-hmm. And I said, I got some issues going over here. I said, for some reason, this song keeps popping up. And it was on all of my tracks except for four, the same song. And so what I did, I did close them out and open them back up again, and they were the right song. So that kind of really freaked me out. So I'm like, okay, Bob, what is it that you're trying to say about don't worry about a thing, every little thing will be all right? I mean, that's, that's comforting. But I don't even know why he why he said that. I don't know why he kept bringing that to me. And I was ignoring it, but, like, the third time, it, it grabbed my attention. I said, uh-uh, Bob, what the hell are you trying to say? So this is where I'm at right now, y'all. I don't know exactly what the whole um, message is he's trying to bring. Maybe it's just he wants to do what we're doing now. Maybe, like, the sister um, had told us, had told me yesterday, that sometimes they just have to find, they try to find whoever can listen or who have their ears open to hear them because um, my ears are wide open. I can say everybody on the team is too, but I can speak for myself. I know mine are wide open, and I believe theirs are too. But they're, that's why they're coming to us. It's like, okay, we know that you're paying attention and you're wide open. And so it gets kind of spooky in a way, but at the same time, I'm glad that we are open like that so that we can have the connection with our ancestors, because for so long we've been connecting with the wrong spirit. And mm-hmm. now that we know better, you know, now that we're no better, now we're open. We're open, and the universe is very, very happy that we are open. And it was something that I wanted um, Ski to to comment on. Y'all remember what it was? But now I forget. <laughs> it was, I was about uh, them, them blocking Bob Marley music here in America. That, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We give thanks for well, the that, king. I, they blocked his music because, especially when he was um, doing it while he was living, the reason why they blocked him here in America because that's all we needed here was that new, that energy that he was producing, producing, mm-hmm. you know. How y'all was saying, how y'all broke down the 11 mm-hmm. in his, um, in his uh, spiritual chart and the, and the numbers within his spiritual chart. His music was the only thing missing to take our um, revolution that was going on to the next level. If we okay. could have heard him come here live and give us those verses and those songs and, and give us all those beautiful uh, things that he talked about, and we could have took that energy on to the streets. But instead, during those times, we had a lot of love music, a lot of, uh, you know, the music wasn't um, as powerful as as Marley and them was doing down there in the islands. So we right. needed our brothers in the islands to give us that that musical energy and also they were doing their thing with the oppression also. We needed their energy to be coupled with ours here in the States. Because like mm-hmm. you look up the best of the best were were sent off, as they would say. So they're down there in the islands. We up here in America. We up here battling with the oppressor. They down there battling with the oppressor. The different thing I seen here was just our songs here, our energy concern. It was just a lot of spiritual, Negro spirituals, a lot of, um, you know. Downtrodden music. Downtrodden music. You had the blues. You, you had a lot of things that was opposite of what Marley was given with his music. Okay. That energy really needed. And that's why America to this day will not let Bob Marley be um, placed in any stature of, of being an icon of music, even though we all know by um, studying him, and that's why you brought him to the forefront, you and the Queens, and challenging him. He want people to know he was he was a freedom fighter that they will not. His rhetoric is something they don't want, so that's why. Wow, wow. You got any, any uh, last words, um, Tisha and Kenya? Oh, uh, for me. I'm just happy we have to do this, and I'm telling you, uh, um, this is so, um, one more person that's been coming up in here, and um, 
he is the king of the electric guitar, and that is um, uh, the, the the wonderful, <laughs> you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix. You know, Jimi Hendrix. He mm-hmm. just, you know, I got a little tongue tied right there. I couldn't get him right out. He's just been okay. he's been wandering around too. You know, him and Bob Marley. <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative of to have them come back in here and get us jump started again. It's just like we can't let that go. That's some good energy right there. Well, let's we you know maybe we'll, we'll bring him next week. Let's do that next week. Mm-hmm. Well, y'all, that's it. I think we lost uh, KJ, so I'm gonna just uh, close it out on behalf of her <laughs> and um, tell you that we appreciate you all uh, tuning in today because. Hey, this was something that we didn't really plan. Bob planned it. So uh, we thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to play one more song before we head out of here, and I thank uh, Kenya Jones and Teacher Kushite Power and Ski Davis for helping me with this because he y'all y'all wouldn't arrest us tonight if y'all didn't come do it too. Trust me. So maybe now, uh, you know, Bob and and we thank him for his positive energy. Right. Uh, and, and we we give thanks for him even you know considering to to speak to us. I know so many people want Bob to speak to them, and they try to challenge him or whatever. And you know whether he does it or not, I don't know. But I you know I, I just feel honored that you know without me even asking, he decided to come. And so we say a one love to the late great Bob Marley, and we will see you all again right here tomorrow. For um, what's tomorrow? Oh, Dry Feet, my show. That's a beer bay. That's a beer bay. So if you're a lawyer or or a, a judge or an officer or whatever, wherever you are into law enforcement, period, you don't want to miss that show. But you can bring your questions because the beer bay is going to teach you law. And so don't miss that tomorrow at four o'clock Mountain Standard Time, five o'clock Pacific Time, and six o'clock Eastern. Standard time. Peace and one love to you all, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace. Peace.